be criticizing me, not after what you've been. It ain't what a prison's been, it's what they are. You used to be a soldier once, but what have you been ever since? Nothing but a souse. But ain't nothing but what you are. Shut your mouth, shut your mouth! Don't you be throwing that in my face. Ah, uh, get on with that stew, will you? You're not even a good cook. Frankie, where did it come from, Ma? Huh? I got it for you at Victor Brothers. It almost fits. But why, Ma? Graduation. Oh, gee, thanks. The old man soused again? Worse than ever. I get so worried sometimes I don't know how I stand. Supper's on. I ain't blind. Shall we go down and eat, Pa? Well, where did you get that hat? Mom bought it for me. It's for graduation. Yeah, that's where he got it. I bought it for him. He don't have to graduate in no hat. We can't spare the money. Seems like we got money for liquor. Oh, it's okay. all right. It's all right. I'll take it back right away, I will. Here. Yeah. You all right, Mom? Yeah, I'm all right. going to let you go until you promise me that you'll do something tomorrow afternoon. Well, after all, you don't graduate every day of your life, you know. It's an event. You'll do all right, Miss Williams, without me. And besides, I can't do anything like those others. Well, I don't care if you just stand up when I call on you. The important thing is that you must take your place with them. You're going to have to do it later with a great many other people. Night, Miss Williams. Such a lovely time. Good night, Carol. And you make Frankie promise not to disappoint me? All right. Good night. Good night, Miss Williams. She's fine. Which way are you going, Carol? Mm hmm? Come on. Not till you promise. Look here, I'm not going to promise you or anybody else anything. Especially when I can't do anything. You're not mad at me. Of course not. You like me? Can you stop? But I like you, Frankie. I gotta go home. Good night, Frankie. Good night. with us, the President of our Board of Education, Mr. Hayes. Ladies and gentlemen, children, if I may obtrude the experience and observations of some years, which I choose to call 
packing one's trunk for the journey. Packing one's trunk for the journey. What's he talking about? If into one's trunk one will put enough self-discipline, strength of character, respect for law and order, then I assure you that each one of you shall find life a glorious and a happy adventure. Now, first, according to the plan we settled on last night, I should like to call upon John Shelley. Uh, it is John's plan to enter high school and subsequently to study law. What are you going to recite for us, John? Portia's courtroom speech from the Merchant of Venice. The quality of mercy is not strain. It droppeth as a gentle rain from heaven. And earthly power doth then show like as God's when mercy seasons justice. And now, um, Wallace Kishler, determined to take his place in the world of art. Well, isn't that far? Looks like we might go right into the Wednesday night service, doesn't it? And now, oh, Robert Hale. Uh, Robert, after only brief study, has shown great promise in his chosen field, music. has a definite flair for mathematics and he is, I believe, going to ask you some questions. How much is 11 times 12, John? 132. Carol, how much is 11 times 14? 154. How much is 11 times 18, Frankie? 198. Don't you see it's this way? It's just like my papa told me. When you work in a bank, you have to be quick at figures. I work in a bank every Saturday. Someday I'm going to run it. When you multiply by 11, you add the two outside figures and stick them in the middle. Uh, now we're going to hear from one of our girls. You know, in this modern world, girls have careers too. Carol Evans. Have you thought of something to do, Frankie?
brief recess after which there will be refreshments <laughs> and you will receive your report cards and your certificates of graduation from grammar school. Sheriff Kramer. Hiya, Mr. Hersey. You should have been here sooner. Excellent entertainment. Excellent. Glad to see you, Sheriff. Ah, I do wish you'd seen the children. Frankie was fine today. You should have heard him play his harmonica. I didn't know you played the harmonica, Frankie. Do you? A little. <laughs> well, won't you take a seat? <laughs> no, thank you, Miss Williams. But after school, would you mind dropping in at my office? Well, I'd be glad to. And bring Frankie with you. Well, yes, of course. Thank you, Miss Williams. Where were you last night, Frankie? I was home. That's where I was. I was home, I was. What time did you get home? After I left Miss Williams' house. I was home all night. Hmm, I see. Frankie, I talked to your mother, and she said you didn't get home till 10 o'clock. What about that? Well, I waited a little while, that's all. Sure you didn't wait around Blair's hardware store. Sure you didn't break in and steal that harmonica. Did you, Frankie? I'm your friend. You can talk to me. Yes, I did. Why? Well, they wanted me to do something at school today, and that's about all I could do. I didn't have the money to buy one, and I saw that and went on my way home. So I took it. What else did you take? You took some money out of the cash drawer, didn't you? Yes. How much? Seven dollars and eighty cents. I'm glad you weren't in court today, Miss William. You hear them Blair's talk, you'd think Frankie had committed murder or something. Every kid steals something. Whether it's a watermelon or cherries on the trees next door. He has to steal something before he knows it's wrong. I'm sorry about the whole thing. Couldn't you do anything about it, Sheriff? No. I suppose you might say Frankie's going to have to pay for... Well, you know, he lives on the other side of the tracks. Besides, he's been in trouble before on probation. There's nothing can be done about it. I got to be going now. It's not far from 8.15. May I go to the station to see Frankie? Of course. Where is he now? I sent him home to see his mother, but he'll be there all right. That's what I think of the boy. Thanks for giving me the old man's suitcase, Mom. I wanted to say goodbye to him, but, well, he was asleep. Will you tell him, Mom? Goodbye, Frankie. Gee, I never noticed how pretty these flowers looked before. Well, except that rose bush over there. Kind of skinny, ain't it, Mom? Do something about that, will you, Mom? So. Frankie. I don't know. Say, now there's a job for you. All a guy does is make a lot of dots and dashes. Do you understand it? No. Well, A is a dot and a dash, and B is a dash and three dots, and C is... Gee, I don't remember what C is. It's a cinch if you just learn how to make them dots and dashes. You shouldn't have come down here. Be a good boy, Frankie. I'll write to you. And we'll be waiting to see you back here. This is where you belong. Oh, gee, thanks, Miss Williams. 
But what you blow me about? You know, I never been on a train before. Every night when I'd hear him chug and whistle and go around the bend down there near Smith's Grove, I always wanted to be on one, going someplace. And now I am going someplace, ain't I, Sheriff? And there'll be red plush cushions and everything. Won't there, Sheriff? Yeah, Frankie. Plush cushions and everything. Goodbye, Miss Williams. I haven't any tickets, Sheriff. Have you got them? Yes, I got your ticket, Frankie. Will you stop crying, Carol? I'll be back soon, before you know it. I'm not going any place, just to a farm. I like to work on a farm. Someday I'll come back and... You can't tell, maybe someday I'll have a job like that guy in there. A cinch, that's all it is. Just a lot of dots and dashes. You'll get along all right in here, just as you want to. That's up to you. It's up to me to enforce the rules, and I do. You understand, don't you, Sheriff? Yes, I understand. You understand, don't you, Frankie? Yes, sir. All right, Sheriff. Is there anything I can do for you back there, Frankie? No, I don't think so, Sheriff. Gee, this is a swell place, ain't it? You a new guy? Yeah. Where you from? I said, where you from? That's none of your business. Oh, a wise guy, huh? That's my business. That's my business. No difference in this joint. Listen, you. You're no better than any of the rest of them prisoners. What I put you in charge was to keep order up there. Listen to them bums walking around. They're scrubbing. All right, see that they scrub. And see that they scrub in their bare feet. From now on, no one puts their shoes on till noon. How do you think I'm going to sleep? There'll be trouble. Yeah, who's going to make it? Anyone tries it, you beat them within an inch of their life. You're big enough. All right. All right, you mug. Get your shoes off. Get them off. And from now on, keep them off till after 12 o'clock. You get it? You? Come on, snap into it. Oh, come on, come on, come on. All right, you guys, get them off. Get your shoes off there. Wake up. Get them shoes off in there. Come on, stupid. Wake up. Get them off. Come on, get along, 
Well, so that show. Was it you? No. Just in case it was. longer about you, Rogers. <clears throat> no wooden? No. You can't steal automobiles and start riots and get away with it. You're a cinch to go up for five years. We'll know where to send your mail, all right. State penitentiary. I hate to think how much I'm going to miss you. And therefore... I sentence you, Frank Rogers, to the state penitentiary for five years. We're a thief. I ain't so sure. We're Frankie Pitchin, why not? He's a loser. Ah, what do you mean? He's got a fireball he'll be throwing past him all afternoon. Hey! Oh, no! Did you see that guy steal second? I didn't see nothing. I ain't no stew, I ain't. What do you want to steal things for? That's how I got here. For because they're getting three hits in five innings? You don't think I'm as dumb as that? You're swell. But they want you up in the office. Oh. Yeah, don't give them any fat ones. When they start clouding the plates, they'll right their heads. Good luck, Slim. That's right, Warden. I pitched five innings and I've done five years. So what? I haven't any respect for a man who gets a chance and doesn't know how to handle it. This is your chance now. Don't blow it. Don't worry, Warden. I won't. Get you summon? Yeah. Live or without music? Without. Well, we're leaving here tomorrow. We'll be low going. Three weeks in Cleveland and we'll have a roll. I'm going to miss this joint. See you later. I'm going down and try on my suit. We've got ours all picked out. And yours won't fit any better. Yeah. It's just three well-dressed men leaving store. That's not what's going out. Just three suits of old clothes. Look at it. You know what? What'd you like to do? I want a steak. I'd like to see some gal. What'd you like, Frankie? I just want to get rid of this bundle. Some collar buttons, a whole shirt, blazer. In five years.
pleasure to speak to you tonight of success. I have no patience with people who quarrel with their lot in life. I tell you I have no patience with people who quarrel with their lot in life. Because success, success after all, rests within yourself. Well, strike in. Yeah, it's got meat all around it. Take me, for example. When I was a little boy, I began by singing in the choir. And when the contribution box was passed, I gave. I tell you, I gave. I gave even of my pennies. What are we going to do with the dishes? Say, if I had a gun and you'd throw them up in the air, I could knock them off like clay pigeons. Well, you haven't got any, Rod, and you ain't going to have one. Well, I'm not going to wash them. Nobody asked you to. Say, I got an idea. Hmm? There's a joint down here I used to sing in. I'd like to make them a present. They don't care if they're washed or not. Anyway, I'd like a drink. Yeah, sure do I. Okay, Frankie? Anything. I just got to keep moving. Oh. Oh. For the last few years, well, what I mean to say is, he's been a guest to the government. But you wouldn't understand about that. <laughs> now I'm going to ask him to sing one of the old songs that he used to sing for me before he asked for a raise in pay. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing that marvelous singer of old songs, accompanied by the Silver Slipper singing waiters, and I want you to give him a great big hand, Mr. Burt Gallo.
out of these clothes. The steak of Simon and Danes. Swell, wasn't it, Frankie? Yeah, steak was okay. But what do we do next? I'm going home. If you guys want to come along, it's okay. If you don't, it's okay, too. Well, what do we get in a town like that? Just a lot of fresh air. If you think you can stand it. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Yeah, that's the mail this morning. What's the idea? It's the first of the month, is it? Well, thank you. Oh, that is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, but that ain't all. Can you hold that for me a minute, please? Oh, I am a bother this morning. You must be all worn out. No, yeah, no, I'm used to it. Been doing it for 30 years. Be retiring soon. And on a pension, too. And I can go fishing whenever I like. And no more work. Just fishing. Why, Al, but this town wouldn't be the same without you bringing the mail around every day. I don't believe you'd be happy if you couldn't. I don't know what I'd do if it stopped me from teaching school. Well, all the way you look at it, I suppose. But I'm getting old. Well, so am I. You know why I got so much mail today? It's my birthday. Well, I'll be darned. I hope it's all right. Happy one, Miss Williams. Help! And to think so many of your friends remembered you. Why not? That's what I say. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean that. But it is lovely, don't you think? Oh, they've all been so sweet. Now, isn't this one nice? That's from John Shelley. Remember Henry Shelley's son? Why, oh, yes. Oh, Indeed, I do. Oh, he's done so well, I hear. But then, of course, I knew he would. Well, I think it's both for right smart to make him a lawyer. I do, too. Yes, what with the world being like what it is today. Well, I do hope John is happy. Oh, and Robert Hale and his music. Do you remember how he used to play the violin? He had a fine talent, I thought. I do hope he's doing well. This one's from Wallace Kishler. He says he painted that himself. It's all in watercolors. Sort of shows his early promise. Yes, I suppose Wallace is a big artist now. had a cousin who was a painter, too. But the last time she wrote me, she told me that he was strictly on the bottle. And what do you suppose she meant by that? A man doesn't paint bottles all the time, does he? Hello? Oh, hello, Charlie. I just wanted to wish you many happy returns, Miss Williams. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't get over to see you. But, you know, I just can't help being sentimental when it comes to birthdays, especially concerning my teacher. Oh, well, it was awfully nice of you to remember. Goodbye. Oh, that was Charlie Smith. He's the only one of that class, I believe, who's still in town. Well, I don't blame him being in charge of his father's bank and all. Carol Evans. Carol Evans, who is she? Don't you remember? Well, she used to live next door to the Neelys on Elm Street. I believe she's a big actress now. Birds have their nests. Stars have their sky. I'm just a wanderer. No friend have I.
Well, I think these have made me happier than any of the others. They're from Frankie Rogers. Well, he certainly didn't come to a good end. Well, I don't think Frankie was really a bad boy. He just didn't have the same chance the others had. He made those bookends himself, he says. According to this card, he isn't in the reformatory. He's traveling. Well, I do hope Frankie's all right. But sometimes I worry about him as much as though he were my own son. I used to live in a little town once myself. Yeah? Why did you leave? Well, it was like this. I stole a horse and took it home. It was a white horse, and I started to paint it black. Well, I just got one side of it done, and then I ran out of paint. I've often thought that a little more paint would have changed my whole career. But that's the way it goes. Right, Frankie? Yeah, that's the way it goes. Where'd you pick up this rod? In that honky tonk. I had to take something and there was no toothbrushes around. Meet you guys in front of the First National Bank at 2 30. 2 30 in the morning? No, 2 30 in the afternoon. Mr. Frankie. Seven, she's just touching the head, that's all. And it took me away to, to... to Toledo, somebody said. Ain't Toledo the place where they carry crazy people? Yes. That's the place. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Frankie, but... Did you see my mother when she left? What did she say? What did she do? I didn't see her, I didn't. But they say she just wasn't sad at all. Only one thing funny she did was just before she left. When she stood out there at the gate, she said to the gentleman who had come to fetch her, she said, What pretty roses, ain't they? Then they knew she was touched, because there wasn't a single rose nowhere. Anything else? Then she said, Please take care of that scrawny one over there, because that's the one Frankie liked. Then they took her away. That's all. You've been here long? About a year. Oh, yeah. If I can fix you up for the night, there's a room upstairs. Suppose you'd want to stay once more in your home after being away so long. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Hamilton. How much... How many children you got, Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, just these two. Oh, yeah, and the other one, Roy. 
Oh, I guess you don't remember him, though. He's a man now. The porter on the B&O. Fine. Miss Williams, is she still a... Still in town? Uh, Miss Williams, she here. She here all the time. Gotten old now, but still just as pretty. Still lived at the same place over on Spruce Street. Thanks, Mrs. Hamilton. Are you going to be a porter, too, when you grow up? Maybe. I don't know, sir. I suppose you know your father got to join his lodge before he died. No, I didn't. But you think that helped? Well, it made him powerful happy. And they say he died with the most loveliest smile on his face. Was he plastered? You mean to say, Miss Williams, after all them years you worked for him, they give you the gate? I don't understand you, Frankie. I think you should say, after all those years, they gave you the gate. But I still don't understand because they didn't give me any gate. Sorry, Miss Williams. You mean to say they put the slug on you? What I'm trying to say is, you ain't got no job no more? Is that it? That's right. Only, don't you think you ought to say you no longer have a position? Hmm? That's all I want to know. Who's running the joint? I beg your pardon? Who's the boss, the big guy, the head man? <laughs> well, you certainly speak strangely, Frankie, but I think I'm beginning to understand you. Charlie Smith is the president of our board of education. He runs the bank now. You know, you remember him? Yeah, I remember him. The fresh little... Sorry. The fresh little guy that was so smart at figures. That's he. Oh, he's done so well. He's down at his bank now. I'm sure he'd be very glad to see you. That's fine. I'll be glad to see him, too. He said he'd be here at 2.30. What time is it now? 2.38 and a half, if this thing's on the level. Where'd you get that watch? Oh, I just picked it up. How? One of the local boys was eating a sack of popcorn, but he won't miss it. What does a guy want with a watch in this town anyway? Wait here. Some people say bankers are hard, that they have no sentiment. But I tell you here and now, I will not see that little schoolhouse destroyed, not for all the money in the world. Yes? Mr. Frankie Rogers to see you, Mr. Smith. What do you think of that? Show him in. Will you gentlemen excuse me, please? Certainly, Charlie. Of course, Charlie. Well, well, Frankie. How are you? This is a funny one. I was just talking about you. Why is you, Charlie? Uh, let's see how you look. <laughs> you haven't changed much. I suppose you might say that comes from living right, eh, Frankie? <laughs> yes, you might say. Nice place you got here. Why, you haven't seen a thing. Sit down, sit down. Oh, no, thanks. I don't want to waste your time. Now, now, at least you'll let me show you through the bank. Now, here's a little idea of my own. Take a look at this burglar alarm. If anybody just walks in front of that at night, goes off. Sort of a radio beam arrangement. Not a chance for anybody to get away with a thing. Let's see. Now, this safe is the very last word. I can hardly get in there myself. Are you insured, Charlie? Yes, yes, everything insured. Everything in apple pie order. What do you want to do, Frankie? Do you want a job? I can't fix you up here, but I understand the chain works is opening up soon. Mr. Hamilton? Yes, the town certainly is booming. How about Miss Williams? Oh, she's fine. What do you mean? Well, don't you think it'd be a good idea if you put her back to work? Well, she has her pension. After all, she's done her service now. She should have a rest. This new school building takes care of 500 kids. What we need is youth in our teaching staff. Don't you worry about Miss Williams, Frankie. We'll take care of her, all right? Yeah. She'll sit in that little old house and wither and die, thinking about you and me and the rest of the kids. How about putting her back to work, Charlie? I'll take it up at the next board meeting, Frankie. And I want to thank you for coming in. You going to be in town long? I don't think so. Do you need any money? No, thanks. Do what you can for, will you? I will, Frankie. I certainly will. And you've given me an idea. 
Okay. This looks like a cinch. I've been standing here for over an hour. I ain't seen a single cop. We're not knocking it over. This is my hometown. We're leaving. Where for? Cleveland. Oh. Pardon me, can you tell me where the Chamber of Commerce is? I don't know. I'm a stranger here. Hey, it's been a long time, 15 years. You say she's a big star? Tell me she's getting along all right. Any chance for a touch? If there was, I wouldn't make it. I don't know whether I'm going to like this town or not. You've been talking about nothing all the way from Mac. What's on your mind? Well, I heard some dough and I got in a taxi. The taxi driver was an old guy, booked under the knees. Just doing the best he could, I guess. And a copper gave him a ticket for going three feet to a stoplight. So you sucked the cop? Oh, no, I didn't. I tried to reason with him. Then I saw him. What did you say to him? I says to him, I says, a fine job you got making people unhappy. Look at this old man here. He's just crying and you come along and gum it all up. What did he do, I says? What did he do that would hurt anybody? You know what that copper says to me? He says, if you don't shut up, I'll slug you and throw you in a can. That's what he says. So I seen I couldn't reason with him. What did you do? That's when I stopped him. What did it cost you? Six months. And I might say that the jail here stinks. You know, it's a funny thing about coppers. What's funny about them? Well, I know a guy once, a friend of mine. He was an all right guy, too. He got on a police force. The minute he got a load of himself, all dressed up in those brass buttons, he was a different guy. I don't like him either. Well, I guess they're just trying to do the best they can. I wish you wouldn't use that word can. Why not? Can is a void. It may be a void to you, but to me it's a joint where you do six months. You gotta get out of that dress and get out of it right away. You didn't like it? Sure, I liked it, but the dame just come too. Somebody hit her with a cold towel or something. Yeah, they should have slipped her a Mickey. Some other time, Carl. so much of it. First from our hometown. I get laughs out of it. Did you laugh when you read about my trouble? I didn't mean that. It should have been a big laugh. Oh, I see old man Blackie's dead. Yes. That's good. I hated that old buzzard. Beat me up when I was a kid because my dog licked his dog. That's just a punk. I liked it. You mustn't hate anybody, Frank. It's no good. Okay, I won't. You say so. 
If there was no good when he was alive, I don't see that dying makes him any better. What time is it? 12.30. Oh, I'm going. It was swell seeing you. When will I see you again? I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I do. You're going to stay here. You're going to get a job. Why? I want you to. On the level? On the level. Gee, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Tie, will you? Just match the soup. Sure. Take leave, you fellas. This is my big night. Yes, I see. Same dame? Not a dame. Somebody else. You're the luckiest guy that ever lived. If you fell in a lake, you'd come up with a handful of fish. I ain't lucky at all. This is a game of science and skill. The trouble with you, Judd, is you don't concentrate. Yeah, I'll concentrate on knocking your head off the next time you deal one from the bottom. What do you mean? You know what I mean. What do you got? I got one, two, three, four aces. Maybe you've got four aces, but that ain't the hand I dealt you. What do you mean? You know what I mean. I think you're being very unethical. Explain them words. I think you're a crook. And what are you? I'm just a victim of society. That's what I am. Yeah, and you're a crook, too. Then we're a couple of crooks, is that it? Yeah. That's it. Oh, you want to fight, huh? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What goes on here? Cut it out. Stop it. Ah, uh, you little... Why, I'll break it. Oh, you... Oh, I'm sorry, Frankie. I'm sorry, too. It's okay. Ah, uh, you throw one at me and you hit Frankie. That's how good you are. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. You ain't gonna get nowhere fighting like that. Win or lose, we gotta stick together. Come on, shake hands. Boy, I wish I had a hunk of beefsteak. Good evening. Yeah. I'm Mr. Hicks, the manager. I'd like to speak to you about your bill. We've only been here three days. But you have no baggage. Chill the beep, will you fellas? See you later. Come in, Mr. Hicks. Yeah. Yeah, come in and uh, have a chair. Some discussion about the bill? Yes, there is. Well, sit down there. <laughs> uh, do you ever play uh, cards... Gee, this is swell. I certainly fixed things up good. Wasn't the door enough, Carol? I tried to stop two guys from punching each other, and I ran into one myself. What's the idea of the potato? Well, fix up that eye. That's the idea. Oh, wait a minute. If you put it on, I won't be able to see it all. It doesn't matter. I'll be here. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't have to see you. Lots of times when I couldn't. But you know, Carol, I always had a kind of a feeling you was around some ways. You know what I mean? Yes, Frankie. Gee, this is cold. Where'd you learn these things? It's nothing. I was going to take you out tonight and have some fun. 
Here we are, just you and me and a sliced potato. What a swell. Good evening. Good evening. Did the boys pay the bill? I paid the bill. What do you mean? They got me into a poker game. Did you lose? One week's rent. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Don't worry. I'll give you a chance to get it back. Good night. Good night. reunion. What's that? Oh, a fellow in my little hometown who made a lot of money wants to get all his old classmates together. Says he'll pay all the expenses. Oh, I know. It's one of those things where everybody gets together and lies to each other about the success. I wonder if he sent one to Frankie. Frankie? Yeah. Boy I was with last night. What's his last name? Frankie who? Rogers. Frankie Rogers. What does he look like? Looks very nice. At least I think so. You saw him. Well, does it look anything like that? That's what I did, and that's what happened. I didn't kill the guy, and that's the truth. And that's just what they won't believe. But I'll tell them... You won't tell them anything. I don't want you to. I don't want you to come to see me no more. Because you can't help me and you can hurt yourself. Can't you see that? Did you send a reunion invitation to Frankie Rogers? I've tried everything I can think of, Mr. Smith, but I haven't been able to find the address for him. Yeah, you can find it now, all right. It's the Cleveland County Jail. And from the looks of this, it'll soon be the Ohio State Penitentiary. Take a look at that. I knew that boy, Tim. I went to school with him. He's sure in trouble now. Look, Tim, I've got fifty dollars. Do you want me to pay you what I owe you, or will you let me go there and see him? I'd like to help him if I can. Forget about me, son. I can wait. You go help your friend. See me when you get back. 
Thanks, Tim. Frankie. What do you want? How'd you make out? Okay. When does the jury get it? This afternoon sometime, maybe. Good luck, Frankie. Thanks, Miles. What do you think's going to happen, John? Oh, I don't know. What are you going to say this afternoon? I don't know, Carol. Maybe I shouldn't have taken this case. After all, it's Frankie's life I've got in my hands. I've never been a trial lawyer. What does that mean, John? Well, out there in Illinois, I just fuss around trying to sell insurance and do a little work on mortgages and leases at times. I'm scared stiff. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, until a moment ago, I had no idea what I could say to you. The defendant himself has suggested a plan, and it's this very fact which allows me to throw him so confidently on your mercy. I've known the defendant since we were children. I remember one afternoon, Frankie helped me take a, a fish hook out of my finger. I know that nothing ever happened to help that boy. But I've never heard him complain. In fact, even now, when he sits before you all but condemned, not by you, but by the forces which inevitably brought him here, he has no complaint to make. It's not of himself, but of me that he's thinking. He asks me to bring glory on myself. Not mercy for himself. I tell you, there is much to be honored in such a man. If we could take that which is so fine in him and build on it, we could well be proud. Well, what are we to achieve with destruction? Would that make the world a better place then? Why can't we begin here and now the very process which would eliminate these cruel moments from life? Why can't we give him aid rather than unfeeling censor? Don't you see the, the defendant himself has shown us the way? John, you as well. Your Honor... Mr. Foreman, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In all of my experience as an attorney and as a prosecutor, I've never seen a more straightforward case. Let me sum it up for you once more. Three known criminals went into a respectable place of business, armed, prepared to commit murder and with the intention of robbery. The proprietor, a law-abiding citizen of this community, attempted to save his property. And he was mercilessly killed. The defendant, Frankie Rogers, out of the state penitentiary but a short time, fired the shot in cold blood. I needn't call Rogers a fiend or a foul blot on humanity. I use any other dramatic term, the truth is obvious. But... Rogers is prepared to commit murder again, and you are in duty bound to prevent this, and that's why the state demands that you return a verdict of guilty and also demands the death penalty. We, the jury, find the defendant... What are you talking about? You had two strikes on you before you started. You were swell. Gee, I never had anybody say things like that about me before. Where'd you learn all them things? Wasn't he swell, Carol? 
Well, it wouldn't have been so bad if there was a recommendation for mercy, but there wasn't it. What does that mean, John? Oh, why aren't you two step? Well, gee, you'd think this was a funeral. I'm sorry, Frankie. I, I just did the best I could. Bye, John. Bye, Carol. What are we going to do now, John? I don't know, Carol. I thought that on my way back to Illinois, I might stop by St. Mary's for that... that reunion, but... not now. No. Do you think if we went back to the reunion, we might get Charlie Smith to help Frankie? <laughs> Always the artist, eh, Wallace? Admiring the pictures. Well, I never went in much for that art stuff myself. Mrs. Smith selected all these. Charlie is clever. Don't you think it was smart of him to bring you all here? No, I think it was a very nice sentiment. Thank you. Of course, there's a the publicity. Well, did you see many of your old friends? Yeah. Walked around this afternoon. Saw Harry Tobin. <laughs> Hardly knew him. And I saw Tom Bothwell. <laughs> he didn't look any too good either. And I stopped into the new pool room downtown, and there wasn't a soul in the place that I knew. I don't know. Coming back to a little town is not so good, I guess, after a long time. You just seem to see the years sit down on them. That's right, Bob. The years sit down. Miss Williams. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Parties are bust. Yeah, Carol. We were just talking about it. What do you think is wrong? We all know what's wrong. It's Frankie. What can we do, John? Anything? I don't think so. They denied the appeal. Well, do you think we could get Charlie to help him? No, Carol and I talked to him. I don't think he could help anyway. It's too late. Yeah, how about some chow? Some supper, my friend. This is your last meal, Rogers. What do you want? What do you mean? A slug of booze or anything you want. Sure. Give me a big hucker of whiskey and drink it yourself. Okay. Hiya, Mouse. Okay, Frankie. Well, took us a long time to get here, but here we are. Yeah. Not far from heaven. I'm a lot further from heaven than you'd think. I suffer in that seat. 
Miss Williams used to ask the darndest questions. But she was always sweet about it, don't you think? You bet she was. Say anything against Miss Williams. <laughs> oh, I was only kidding. Where'd you sit, John? Right over there. Well, you didn't, did you? Yeah, that's where I sat, all right. And that desk there was Carol's. Gee, what a memory. Were you sure about that, John? Yes, I'm sure of it. I know because I sat there, and Carol sat there, and... I guess we all know who sat here. Frank. One for each one of you. Bob? Thanks, Charles. Wallace and John. Now, you're all members of the committee. <laughs> you know, I'd have been here sooner, but I had a little business at the bank. You know how those things go. George, you needn't wait any longer. We can take care of ourselves. Everything all set? That's fine. How does the old place look? Not much change, eh? Well, I want you all to take a good look at it. We're tearing it down next week. We just can't keep it any longer. Too much development. Real estate. Miss Williams hasn't shown up yet, eh? No, Charlie, no, Miss Williams isn't here yet. Well, there's it for her. Well, she'll be along soon, and I'll bet you I can tell you the very first thing she does. What? Well, what did we always used to do Friday afternoon, the first thing? <laughs> you see, I got you stuck already. We sang, right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> you know, I think we ought to have a little drink. What do you say we had one while we're waiting for Miss Williams? Yes, yeah, just a few refreshments I arranged. Don't think this is lemonade, either. I had George put plenty of my best stuff in this. <laughs> Now, you see out there where the duck pond is now, we're going to build a small golf course. Plans all drawn up and everything. So, the way things turn out, there just isn't room for our little schoolhouse anymore. But, if you might say, that's life. Right, Carol? Yes, John. That's life, I guess. <laughs> Bob? Thanks, Charlie. Wallace? And John. Thank you, John. Now, well, how about a little toast befitting the occasion? Carol, you seem very quiet. Will you make it? Here's to... Frankie. on such a happy occasion, it's very regrettable that one of our classmates is in trouble, and I can understand exactly how we all feel about him. But after all, what could we expect? I tried to help him. It's only been a short time since he called on me at the bank. I offered to help him find a job. I even offered to lend him money. You know, I might have got killed or robbed or something. I showed him all around the bank, told him just how everything worked. I'm deeply sorry indeed, but this is an occasion of gaiety. It's a reunion. It's for fun. It's for you. And I want you all to enter into the spirit of things. Carol, you've been in the theater. Won't you sing or dance for us just like you used to? I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me, Charlie. There's really nothing I can do. But I would like to ask you a question. Sure, go right ahead. Fire away, Carol. Did you try to help Frankie? Yes, yes, I did. Just what did you do? Well, I think that's beside the point. I told you what I tried to do for him. After all, I think he deserves just what he got. What did he do? He, he stole. He was in the reformatory. He was in prison. He was offered help, and he committed murder. And I don't see any point in our worrying about Frankie Rogers any longer.
Oh, Carol. Miss Williams. Hi, Charlie. And Bob. Kishner. Hello, John. Nice seeing you all again. Shall I give you that job back, Miss Williams? But it doesn't matter about me, Frank. How did you manage to come here? I guess you're all right now, a little trouble. Them guys in Stir ain't a bad bunch. I told them all about this little party you was giving. They let me come down for a little while. But I gotta get right back. Can't stay very long. Well... How you guys all been doing? Fine, Frankie. Fine. Great. Been doing great, Frankie. Good. Uh, I guess I don't have to ask how you've been doing, Charlie. Yes, Frankie, yes. Sorry you can't stay. Before I go home, I want you to know what I saw pal John with me. Come all the way from Illinois just to help me beat a rap. But no soap. It wasn't John's fault. Made a swell speech, too. Same speech you made here one afternoon. Long time ago. Oh, you said. Ain't much more to say. It's nice seeing all of you, and I wish you all a lot of luck. Where are you going? I don't know. Thanks for coming along, Frankie. We know you can't stay, so we won't keep you. But we know how it is. Yes, we know how it is. I know how it is, and you know how it is, too. You just said that Frankie was not a law-abiding citizen. Did you ever think about yourself? Did you ever think about what caused Frankie to get into trouble? No, all you ever cared about was money. Money, position. Your own wife told me last night that getting us back here was nothing but a publicity stunt. Don't you think that's fine? Bringing us all back here to parade yourself in front of us? You know we never made a dime in our own throat. That wouldn't be so bad, but it's the way you look. Carol, you mustn't. What did you ever do for him? What did any of the rest of us ever do for him? I'll tell you what we did. Nothing. And I'll tell you something else. I hate what you stand for, and I hate you. No, no, no. Carol, no, you're wrong. You mustn't hate anybody. That ain't right. That ain't no good, remember? I used to hate people, too, but that's easy, but it ain't right. I know the guy in the cell used to beat him over the head with a rubber hose. I hated him. One day I saw him going after a guy that was making a break to fill him full of lead. He dropped right on my feet. And I saw the look in that guy's eyes that took all the hate out of me forever. I went to get him a tin cup full of water, but he never lived to drink it. When he came back, he was dead. Come on, Carol. Charlie's all right. We're all all right. I'm glad to see you all doing so well. I know you all done the best you could. Maybe I did, too. I don't know. I gotta go. Come on, Carol. Tell Charlie you're sorry. If you don't, I ain't never gonna be happy no more. I'm sorry. That's well, Carol. You ain't gonna need this. Bye, John. Bye, Charlie. So long. Goodbye, Miss Williams. I know Charlie's going to get that job back for you. of Frankie to come to see us, wasn't it? Miss Williams, we were just saying before you came that probably the first thing you'd let us do... I know. Just what we always did on Friday afternoon. Is that right, Charlie? Yes, Miss Williams. 